the clinical landscape for COVID-19 treatment is constantly evolving. This video will walk viewers through the major therapies under investigation, highlighting their mechanism of action and key studies so far. Currently, the Infectious Disease Society of America does not recommend that any of these drugs be used without a clinical trial at this time. The information discussed here is up to date as of May 5, 2020. By the end of this concept video, healthcare professionals will be able to recall the basic pathogenesis and host immune response of a COVID-19 infection, describe the evidence basis for investigational therapies targeting the SARS-CoV-2 life cycle and the host immune response. This video is geared towards healthcare professionals already familiar with the basics of COVID-19. For a more extensive primer, please see curriculum.covidstudentresponse.org. The drugs discussed during this two-part video series are listed below with their trade names and relevant timestamps. In part one of the video series, antivirals will be discussed. In part two of the video series, medications that act on the immune response will be discussed. Based on our understanding of SARS and MERS and their similarity to COVID-19, the human immune response in mild cases is likely characterized by a strong antiviral response and CD4 and CD8 T-cell response, resulting in clearance of the virus. In severe cases, there is likely an initial delay in the antiviral response. Subsequent increased production of inflammatory cytokines with an influx of monocytes and neutrophils into the lung then leads to cytokine storm syndrome. These cytokines, including interleukin-1 and interleukin-6, increase vascular permeability and may contribute to respiratory failure. Another hallmark of severe disease is lymphopenia, which may be due to direct infection of lymphocytes or suppression of bone marrow by the antiviral response. Neutralizing IgM, IgA, and IgG antibodies to SARS-CoV-2 can be detected within two weeks of infection. It is still unknown if and for how long patients are protected from reinfection. The use of convalescent plasma or donated plasma from recovered patients has been successful in past epidemics, including SARS and MERS. This approach has generated a lot of excitement as a treatment for COVID-19. It is most effective for treating patients who are at high risk or are in the early stages of the disease. Convalescent plasma containing neutralizing antibodies against COVID-19 leverages passive immunity to protect recipient patients. Two studies have been published on convalescent plasma. However, they are difficult to interpret given that they were case series with only 5 or 10 patients without controls, and patients were concurrently on other antivirals. In the U.S., the FDA has authorized the use of convalescent plasma on a case-by-case -case basis through the Emergency Investigational New Drug Applications Exemption, while also initiating multiple clinical trials on convalescent plasma. More than 2,000 sites and over 10,000 patients nationwide have signed on to participate in the Mayo Clinic-led Expanded Access Protocol. The FDA has been actively calling for people who have recovered from COVID-19 to donate plasma. The Chinese media reports that Chinese health officials treated at least 245 COVID-19 patients, with 91 showing clinical improvement, but no official data has been published on this patient cohort. Although there is not enough data to currently make a strong determination about the utility of convalescent plasma, given its historic success with MERS and SARS, it is promising. There should be a lot of new data emerging in the near future as its use becomes more widespread. Neutralizing antibodies are monoclonal antibodies, or fragments of antibodies, that bind to a virus's surface particles and prevent it from interacting with and infecting host cells. Neutralizing antibodies have been used to treat multiple viral and bacterial infections, including CMV, hepatitis B, rabies, measles, RSV, diphtheria, and Ebola. SARS-CoV-2-specific neutralizing antibodies are likely to act upon the virus's spike protein given its easy accessibility on the viral surface and its necessity for host cell entry. Blocking the spike protein would prevent viral entry into the cell and therefore prevent infection of new cells and dissemination within an infected host. 
No key studies on neutralizing antibodies in COVID-19 have emerged, but The Lancet reported that a team of researchers in the Netherlands has created a human monoclonal antibody that neutralizes SARS-CoV-2 in vitro. Researchers at Tsinghua University characterized 206 human viral spike protein receptor binding domain-specific monoclonal antibodies from previously infected patients, demonstrating mechanism of neutralization. There are multiple pharmaceutical companies trying to use neutralizing antibodies as a treatment for COVID-19. Approaches include 1. Finding antibody candidates in the plasma of COVID-19 survivors. 2. Immunizing genetically engineered mice with SARS-CoV-2 analogs and selecting the most promising antibodies for human trials, an approach that worked well for treating Ebola in 2015. And 3 using antibodies from SARS-CoV-1 survivors given the similarity in viral structure. While this approach has not yet been tried in humans, given its historic success treating viruses and the multiple approaches being piloted to find effective neutralizing antibodies, this treatment remains promising. As implied in its name, cytokine release syndrome occurs when there is a large release of inflammatory cytokines and a dysregulated inflammatory response. It can be caused by various immunotherapies for malignancy, such as CAR-T therapy or monoclonal antibodies, or after a severe viral infection. Cytokine release syndrome as a severe sequelae of COVID-19 is called cytokine storm. Symptoms include fever, hypotension, and shortness of breath. Tocalizumab and steroids are used for treatment of cytokine release syndrome. Anti-inflammatories, such as anti-IL-6 receptor and anti-IL-1 receptor, are being investigated as a treatment for COVID-19-related pneumonia, pneumonitis, ARDS, cytokine storm, and other inflammatory dysregulation sequelae. Tocalizumab, an IL-6 receptor inhibitor, has been widely used for cytokine release syndrome, which often involves elevated levels of IL-6. IL-6 elevation is also seen in some COVID-19-related sequelae, such as ARDS and cytokine storm. The levels of IL-6 may even predict the severity of the COVID-19-related sequelae. It is thought that by blocking the interaction of IL-6 and the IL-6 receptor, IL-6 receptor inhibitors, such as tocalizumab, will be able to dampen the immune dysregulation that contributes to the pathogenesis of COVID-19 and potentially block or minimize the harmful outcomes of cytokine storm. There is promising early data from a non-randomized, open-label trial of tocalizumab for treatment of COVID-19 in 21 patients in China. Currently, there are ongoing clinical trials to investigate the use of IL-6 receptor inhibitors in treatment of COVID-19. Notably, Genentech is running a Phase 3 tocalizumab trial, COVACTA, in hospitalized patients with severe COVID-19-related pneumonia, and University of Chicago is running COVIDOS trial to test the benefit of tocalizumab in non-critically ill COVID-19 patients. Sanofi and Regeneron are running a global clinical trial to test the efficacy of cerilimab, another IL-6 receptor inhibitor. There is also a siltuximab trial in Italy, which is an antibody that binds to IL-6. Given that there is significant variability in the clinical course of patients with COVID-19, if any benefit is observed in these trials, identifying subsets of patients most likely to benefit will be important in defining how these inhibitors might ultimately best be used. Anakinra is a modified, non-glycosylated version of a human circulating IL-1 receptor antagonist used to treat rheumatoid arthritis, gout, and autoinflammatory syndromes with high circulating IL-1 levels. In one RCT, Anakinra reduced mortality in patients with sepsis with hyperinflammation. Anakinra is an IL-1 receptor antagonist. During viral infections, excess IL-1 release can cause lung inflammation, fever, and fibrosis. Overexpression of IL-1 is a hallmark of severe COVID-19 and cytokine storm syndrome, so blocking IL-1 receptors with anakinra could possibly block or minimize immune-driven pathology and prevent or treat cytokine storm syndrome. One rat model study showed that IL-1 receptor antagonists reduced chemokine expression in animals infected with two rat coronavirus strains. 
Clinical trials are underway testing anakinra alone and in combination with anti-IL-6 or anti-interferon gamma drugs in COVID-19 patients. There is not enough information on anakinra to make a determination of its current outlook. Canakinumab, an anti-IL-1 beta monoclonal antibody, is under investigation as well. Corticosteroids suppress the immune response through various mechanisms. They are used to treat several inflammatory conditions, including some forms of cytokine release syndrome. While there is no high-grade evidence supporting their use for this indication, corticosteroids are used in treatment of cytokine release syndrome on the basis of clinical experience and their beneficial effects in supporting hemodynamics. High doses of glucocorticoids deplete T-cells and impair neutrophil migration, among other immunomodulatory effects. The CDC currently recommends against the use of corticosteroids in the treatment of COVID-19 unless there is another indication. This is because historically, the risks of corticosteroid use outweighed its benefits in the treatment of similar coronavirus diseases SARS and MERS. Patients had increased rates of complications, delayed viral RNA clearance, and no clear mortality benefit. There isn't any strong published evidence looking at corticosteroid use in the treatment of COVID-19 yet. Part 2 of this video series described five therapeutic methods against COVID-19 that target the host immune response. We have provided a summary slide and downloadable graphic here.